everyone. Welcome everyone to another episode of Peak TV. My name is Ali Ghani, and we've got here today Stephen Stone from Castle Minerals, Dickers ASX CDT. Steve, great to see you again. And likewise, Ali. Steve, now we've just completed an oversubscribed two and a half million placement in the company to fast track Gambale, the graphite asset, which is the flagship project. Uh, so all eyes are on it with the mineral resource estimate coming later this month. Tell us a bit about the project and what you're excited about. Well, Kambale is a, a graphite project, and graphite is a commodity that's clearly emerging from the shadows of lithium. Um, the driver for the graphite market is its uh, increase in uh, use for um, the EV batteries and the battery uh, storage, power storage capacity, and there just isn't enough uh, graphite around in the world at the moment. Most of the graphite um, that is produced about a million tonnes. Most of that goes into traditional uses and the car industry demands are just going to be enormous over the next five or ten years. So it's a really good commodity to be in in the first instance. Kambali is emerging very quickly as a very credible possible source of graphite. We dusted that project off about 18 months ago. We've done two drilling programs, done trenching, we've done uh, one phase of test work. We're now on our second phase of test work and it's ticking all the boxes as a very credible uh, project and as you say in two weeks time we've got a, a mineral resource uh, coming out that'll be a maiden jork 2012 and we're pretty confident from the last lot of drilling results that that'll underpin uh, the future of the project and justify us uh, continuing to advance at the fast pace that we have. That's amazing now as supporters of the company and, and long-term supporters of the company tell us a bit about so once you've got the MRE, what are some of the next steps? Obviously, you've indicated that there is a battery grade test work coming up this year as well. Uh, what are some of the milestones between the MRE and, let's say, end of the year? Well, the next and probably the most critical milestone is to complete the test work that we're doing that will show that once we mine the graphite or that we can concentrate it into what we call a very basic graphite concentrate, but that's not the end of the story. You then have to upgrade it into a form that can be used in batteries. And that, that involves several processes, and we need to tick the boxes for all of those. That includes micronization, spherinization, uh, and refining and coating. So once we've done the test work that we're doing now in Perth, we'll send the bulk concentrate that we produce from that over to some specialists in Germany who will run all those tests for us. And it's only when those tests are done that we'll know that we've got a, um, a product that can be used in, in batteries. That's great. Now, you've also said that, you know, positive test works will lend itself into a scoping study potentially for the project. Before we get into the commercial aspects of Kambali, can you tell us a bit more about what you think uh, the graphite market is doing today, but more importantly, what the outlook is like and where it's headed and what role you see Kambali playing in that dynamic? Well, the graphite market, the more you look at it, the more interesting it is. Um, 60 to 70 percent of the world's graphite is mined in China, but about 95 to 98 percent of the graphite that you use to put in the batteries or the storage units also comes from China. So pretty much the world, the whole world is dependent on this what battery anode materials we, we call it. America does not produce any graphite at all. And America and Europe and many other places are building these massive gigafactories to make all of these batteries. And, and I'm, I'm asking, where's all this graphite going to come from? And so is the rest of the world. So that's what's interesting. And to the extent that graphite produces most of the world's battery anode material and supplies it to the rest of the world, it's going to need it for its own um, internal uh, vehicle manufacturers. So I think there's going to be a real bottleneck. And if you look at the research put out by many of the uh, more informed commentators, um, that's certainly the case. They're looking at five or ten times current production needed just to satisfy some basic forecasts. Yeah, I think there's some really good tailwinds in the sector also with, you know, the Inflation Reduction Act coming in more recently as well. Um, just while we're on the topic of battery metals, Steve, uh, the company has positioned itself as a project incubator. And there are also some lithium projects in the portfolio there. For example, we recently saw sampling at Woodcutters. Tell us a bit about the broader strategy for battery metals and, and where you see some of these projects fitting in. 
Well, that's right, Ali. We do badge ourselves as an incubator. We've got a very strong technical team that's very good at spotting good opportunities. And we have built up a portfolio of graphite and lithium projects in the past 12 to 18 months. As you quite rightly say, um, last week we announced that we were uh, just completed some soil sampling on a lithium project that we have sits, that sits right between the Bald Hill uh, mine and the Baldania deposit of uh, Lion Town. So this is in what we call a sort of the lithium corridor. Now we know on our ground that there's the pegmatites where you would look for the lithium. They've been mapped by the Geological Survey of WA, but they were never sampled for um, lithium. And we know um, from processing some old data that was actually generated uh, by Anglo Gold Ashanti looking for gold, but they also assayed for 30 different elements. We know there's lithium indicators there. So we've gone in and just infilled some of that 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 um, that area where we think we've got most chance of finding lithium and waiting on those results uh, right now. And that's the sort of approach that we'll be taking to all of our projects when they become available to to do that work. Yeah, it's great. Now, one thing that we have seen, in, in especially in the last couple of weeks, is a lot of price action in gold. And, you know, with uncertainty um, in global markets, and we're seeing, you know, banks coming under pressure, bond yields falling, and, and gold's, you know, headed to that 2000 mark. I mean, given our exposure to gold um, and some of the projects in our portfolio, where do you see the opportunity from a gold perspective? Well, that's right. Uh, Castle does have a number of gold projects and perhaps the one that's foremost in our minds at the moment is the one that we call Palau. That's east of Mekathara and it's south of some um, of a project called the Mulga uh, Hill that um, uh, Great Boulder have been exploring. I've had a lot of success and a very similar structure, very similar environment. And the interesting thing is the east side of uh, the Mikathara, which is a well-known gold field, hasn't really had a much work on it because there's quite a lot of um, soil soil cover there. So people like um, Great Boulder and others and ourselves are going in there using more modern techniques to see what's lying below. And um, hopefully we might be able to replicate the success at Palau that a Great Boulder are having at um, Mulga Bill. So it's quite an interesting area. There's a few few people knocking on the door asking us what, what we're doing with the project. So, and we're just deciding now what we're going to do. Um, we have advanced the project to a stage where it can be drilled. We've been through all the heritage clearances. We've done all the geochem that you could do. It's now pretty much ready to, to drill. So that's probably our foremost goal project uh, in the company. There is a sister project nearby called uh, Wanganui, which is um, high grade, steeply dipping shoots. I'm pretty sure we'd be able to get some more ounces that somebody like West Gold might need for its Bluebird operation. And then right up in the Pilbara, we have a really interesting project called Beasley Creek that we picked up originally for its conglomerate gold um, potential. And there certainly was conglomerate gold there. That, but then we asked ourselves, well, where's that gold really coming from? And we've been doing a lot of searching up there and we've come up with some areas and some anomalies uh, within those where there's a good chance, we think, of finding that source of that gold. Again, uh, we're just looking at what we're going to be doing with that project, given that we can't do everything um, uh, to every project that we would like to do. So we will be considering farm outs on some of our projects, of course. Yes. And I think I think that's where the multiple upside comes in for existing shareholders. I mean, obviously, a lot of love is given to the graphite and, and projects at Irahidi, but shareholders often forget that, you know, you've got a big portfolio and potentials of farmings and JVs and spin outs, especially uh, being a focus this year. Um, so, Steve, before I let you go, a uh, bit of an elevator pitch for everybody watching, I suppose. Um, what can we look forward to in terms of news flow over the next six months? Well, Castle's market cap is almost entirely, I believe, accounted for by the Cam Valley project. Uh, we've got the MRE coming out at uh, the end of this month, we've got test work coming out, and then no doubt be other developments along the way. So there's going to be a lot of news flow just from that project alone. There'll be news flow coming from uh, our Irahidi base metals that you just mentioned, which we haven't really talked about, and also from our gold project. So there's a, there's a lot of value um, uh, compressed into quite a modest market cap uh, at Castle. And our job as management is to uh, unlock all that 
And it gives, it gives shareholders a number of opportunities, it gives them a lot of news flow, it gives them a lot of reasons to come on to the register enjoy, and enjoy what should be a really good ride in the next six to 12 months. Amazing. Thanks again for joining us, Steve. Thank you very much, Ali.